to our midweek service, everyone. Uh, for those people who are watching online, ayan, 9 million viewers natin ngayon. So, mas marami viewers pag midweek, no? Kasi mas marami. <laughs> nasa, nasa online lahat, ano? Praise God, ano? Welcome sa ating midweek service. At, um, you know, for the past few weeks, we've been going through uh, this series, no? Uh, of study and we are going through the names of God. You know? The names of God. Uh, tonight, we will be talking about another name of the Lord. We will be learning another name that was given to the Lord. You know? He is the Jehovah Sabaoth. Can you say Jehovah Sabaoth? Yeah, Jehovah Sabaoth. You know? So for the past few weeks, na, na study na natin yung Jehovah Jireh, wherein God is our provider, and we look at the story of uh, Abraham and Isaac, ano? and Jehovah Nisi, wherein the Lord is our banner. Moses, you know, lifted up his arms with the rod in his hands, and every time he lifting up his hands, they're, they're winning against the Amalekites, but every time that he gets tired and lower down his hands, the Amalekites are winning in the battle. Jehovah Shalom, he is our peace. Ano? There was no peace in the land during that time because the Midianite are like under, are oppressing the people of Israel. But the Lord have raised the one of the judges, you know, see Gideon, the story of Gideon. We have seen that one. It, and it's wonderful that the Lord could use even you think that you are insignificant but the Lord could use you. The one who, who seems so coward, but the Lord called that man the mighty man of valor. You know? Jehovah Rapha. You know, the Lord is our healer. It was a story wherein the people of Israel were traveling, you know, in the wilderness right after the parting of the Red Sea and there was no water for three days. So when they saw the water in Mara, the water was so bitter. But the Lord, he's the Jehovah Rapha that he healed the water, turned the bitter water into sweet water. Yeah. So tonight, tonight, another name of God, another name. He's the Jehovah Sabaoth. Ano naman tong Jehovah Sabaoth na to? The Hob Jehovah Sabaoth is, ang ibig sabihin ng Sabaoth, he's the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of angels' armies who is always by our side. He is the God who is uh, the Lord of angel armies. Ano? Do you believe that we are at war? Ano? We are at war, but the Lord is the Lord of hosts. He is the God, the Lord of angels armies. He is our Jehovah Sabaoth. You know, the idea of the people of Israel being in the constant battle during that time, di ba yung people of Israel, they are always in war, they are always in the battle during the time of, you know, uh, after they were delivered from Egypt. Because what it is, in reality, even as people of the Lord, we are in a constant battle. But again, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but we are fighting against spirit, evil spirit, against principality, against the darkness and ruler of this world. Kasi ang sabi dito, this is what it says in, in um, Ephesians, ano? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 13, it says there, here, we, are, we for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our enemy is not the people, our enemy is not flesh and blood, uh, but against principality, against power, against the rulers and the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is our enemy. So the idea of the people who are in constant battle during that time, but you know, even though they were in battle, they are victorious because the Lord is their victory. He is the Lord of hosts. So the idea of that is us, spiritually, we are in a constant battle that we are always fighting. Sabi niya dito, we wrestle against flesh and blood. Parang, you know, it, it might sound, uh, ano, parang sounds fantasy for many people, ano? It, it, it might sound something, it's so unreal, ano? But 
we have to take whatever the language of the Bible and we have to take it seriously, especially for us Christian. Kasi the Lord, the God of uh, the, the Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the God of angels army, he takes it seriously wherein he himself, he is the leader, he's the commander in chief of this entire army. So, um, so part of understanding that the Lord is the Jehovah Sabaoth, who is the Lord of heaven's army, is to know that God will fight for us. You know, Whatever we do, whatever, whatever uh, battle, whatever we will go through in our life, the Lord is always in our side. Just like what we have sang, sang earlier. The God of angels army, he is always by our side. He will always protect us. He will always fight for us. It says here, James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Why? Parang andali naman. Why it seems so easy for the devil? Why it seems so easy for the devil to just flee from you? Parang ang bilis naman. You just stand right there, just resist the devil, and then the devil will flee from you. Because, you know, whenever the Lord of hosts within you the devil is fleeing. Why? Because the devil is seeing the Lord of hosts right behind you. Ang nakikita ng devil is the Lord, the God of angel armies. The Lord of hosts, the Jehovah Sabaoth. He's seeing the Jehovah Sabaoth standing right behind you, right next to you. We're in. Kaya yung, yung devil, takot na takot. You are just standing right there, but there is just like behind you. There's God of angels army. That's why the devil is resisting. That's why it's easy for the devil to just flee away because God, the God of angels army is ready to fight for you, ready to fight in the battle. And he is trying to, uh, to fight against the enemy. The devil was trying to inflict anything that is against you. He is our Jehovah Sabaoth. He is the God. No, tandaan natin that the Lord, the God who is the Jehovah Sabaoth, He is the Lord of hosts. He is the, the, the God of angels' armies. Ano? And, and, and alam nyo yung, yung, yung word na Jehovah Sabaoth or the Lord of hosts, actually this is one of the very common or mostly uh, used Lagi itong ginagamit in the Bible. Many times that it was, it was said, it was mentioned. And according to the study, no, 250 times that the Jehovah or the Lord of hosts was mentioned in the Bible. And dami, uh, in the Old Testament lang yun. And it was also mentioned twice in the New Testament. You know? So, and what is very interesting about the name of God is that the very first time it appears in the Bible was in 1 Samuel. Tonight, as we study yung Jehovah Sabaoth, I will be telling you three stories. Three stories wherein it speaks about the Lord is the Jehovah Sabaoth. And the very first time that the Lord of hosts was mentioned. It's very interesting. It seems like very insignificant. Just like when we study Jehovah Rapha, parang it speaks, kasi lagi natin sinigin, Jehovah Rapha, healing, ang iniisip natin, laging about uh, cancer, yung mga ganyan, yung mga, mga diabetes, yung mga ganun, mga sakit-sakit. Pero ang concept pala niya, it's about bitter water, and he turned the bitter water into sweet water. And you know what? The very first time that Jehovah Sabaoth or the Lord of Hosts was mentioned, it is about this woman. It is about this woman na hindi magkaroon ng anak. It was like that. The very first time that it was mentioned. Let me read you. Allow me to read that story to you. Ano? This woman, ano, merong, merong isang mag-asawa. Actually, this man, Alcana. 
Elkanah. There was a certain man from the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Elkanah. Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, he had two wives. Yeah, meron siya dalawang asawa. The name of one, uh, the other wife is Hannah and the other one is Penina. It says here, Penina had children but Hannah had none. Ang mahal na mahal ni Elkana is si Hannah. However, Hannah won't have any children. But Penina, the other wife, she had many children. So what happened is, Penina is always mocking Hannah. Minamak niya si Hannah for not having a children. It says here, because the Lord has closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. Wala kang anak, wala kang anak, wala kang anak. May anak ako, may anak ako. Parang ini-irritate niya. And then verse 7, This went year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept. Wala na siyang magawa, kundi umiyak na lang. Hindi talaga siya titigil hanggat hindi umiyak at maghinagpis itong si, si Hana and would not eat. Once, when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hana stood up. Now Eli, Eli, the priest, was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. Verse 10. In her deep anguish, he prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And then this is her prayer. Then she made a bow and said, O Lord of hosts, O Jehovah Sabaoth, O the Lord of hosts, O the Lord of angels' armies. Ayan, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant will, will you give your maid servant a male child then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head so that was a story that was a story the very first time that the Lord of hosts the God of angels armies was mentioned in the Bible. It's about this woman, about the prayer of a woman na hindi magkaroon ng anak. It's so amazing why it was about this woman. L today, uh, let me encourage you, no? let me encourage you tonight about uh, this woman, Hannah. When the Lord, when, he, when she prayed to the Lord, Oh, Jehovah Sabaoth. Oh, the Lord God of heaven's armies. Please, please, sabi niya, look on the affliction of your maid servant. She could have addressed siguro sana, uh, Oh, Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Pwede naman siya sabihin, provide the baby for me. Oh, Jehovah Rapha. You know, heal, heal my womb para magkaroon ako ng anak. Pwede niya sabihin, or Adonai siguro, or anything. But she said, Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of angels' army, yun ang ginamit niya. That is the name of the Lord that she used. What she is saying over here, parang sinabi niya, Lord, Ipaglaban mo naman ako. Lord, dinaapi ako. Lord, kasi she is weeping bitterly. She feel like naiisahan siya. She feel like she's degraded. She feels like so helpless against the mockery of Penina. Parang sinabi niya, Lord, Jehovah, Saba o the Lord of hosts, please, Fight for me. I'm telling you, no? if it is important to you, it is important to the Lord. Regardless, 
how small it might look or regardless of how big it might look. You know, if it is important to you, it is important to the Lord. And you know what? The Lord heard her prayer. The Lord heard the prayer of this woman, Hannah. And nagkaroon siya ng anak. Do you know who's the child? Samuel. Prophet Samuel. One of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament. Samuel. Yun yung naging anak niya. It's just like over here, our warrior, the Lord of hosts, he cares for you. Ano? Sabi dito. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 6. Because what happened here, there's another thing that I want to talk to you about. Jehovah, the very first time that the name Jehovah Sabaoth appeared in the story, when Hannah prayed, when Hannah prayed to the Lord, Lord Jehovah Sabaoth, ipag-pray, magkaroon ako ng anak. You know what's happening over here? Another thing in the story of here, Remember the background of this. The people of Israel, wala silang king. There was no king. They don't have king during that time. It is the Lord who is fighting for them. Remember, the Lord is sending judges. Nagsasend siya ng mga judges to lead the people of Israel against any battle. And at this point of time, the people of Israel are already about to ask for a king. That they don't want the Lord to be their king anymore. But they will, gusto nila yung, yung king. They, they want to have a king just like the other nation. Just like the other nation who have their physical king. Well, they're not asking yet, but they will ask later on. Ano? So, God is always delivering people. God is always fighting for the people of Israel. Uh, under the oppression or the attack of anything or anybody because he is the Jehovah uh, Sabbath. He is always fighting for them. But later on, they don't like the Lord to be their king no more, the leader of the angel's army. But they want to have a physical uh, a, a king. And the Lord does not want that idea. Ayaw niya. But of course, he just let that happen. And we know that, we know the story, right? Nagkaroon sila ng king. Who's the very first king of Israel? King Saul, right? And then, after that, King David. Do you know what? This child, this child, na ipinanganak na itong Hannah, this the same son who became a prophet who anointed the very first king of Israel and also anointed the second king of Israel, which is King David. What is we saying over here? Yes, because the Lord is their mighty warrior. The Lord is the, the one fighting for them. The Lord is their king. But they don't want the Lord to be the king anymore. So here comes Samuel. Samuel he is the one who will anoint the chosen king for Israel. So that's why it begins with that story, yung story of Jehovah Sabaoth, because the people of Israel, they won't want the Lord to be the leader of the army no more. Now, so when Hannah is praying for a child, he, because he, she gave, sabi niya dun sa promise niya, Lord, I want this child to be offered to you. Kaya naglingkod siya sa Lord. It says here, appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nation. They don't want, they want to have an, a, 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 a king for them. So here he comes. He anointed the people of the Lord. He anointed the king of Israel. He anointed Saul and he anointed King David. So that's the very first time that he was mentioned. Another story, we're in the second time that the Jehovah Sabaoth or the Lord of hosts was mentioned 
It was in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. And you know the story of David, right? We went through King David's story many times, all the time, maraming beses na natin, countless times that we have already talked about King David. At this point of time, the Philistines are against the people of Israel, wherein there is this giant Goliath who is um, mocking the people of the Lord, but nobody wants to fight against Goliath. And here comes David. David just came in, who was very young at that time. He was like about 12, 13 years old that time. He was a shepherd boy. Pero, and then he said, I will fight you. He is the only one who was willing to fight giant Goliath. So, as sabi niya dito, 1 uh, Samuel chapter 17 verse 45, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of Jehovah Sabaoth. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. So this is the second time that the name of the Lord was used, Jehovah Sabaoth, where in the story of David, he said, I'm not fighting against you. I will fight against you. I come before you. I'll fight you in the name of Jehovah Sabaoth, in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of angels' army, the armies of Israel. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth. David was so confident with his God. Confident na confidential. Why? Because God, he knows that the God is the Lord of angels' army. He will fight. He will be the one who will give him the victory. There are times, you know, we are, just like what I said earlier, we are in constant battle. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but it should give us a confident in war, in battle, because the Lord is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of angels' armies who will fight for us. Just like David, he was so confident to fight against Goliath. Same true with us, we should be confident to fight the, the, the giant, whatever giant that we have, whatever Goliath that we have, you know? That we should have like a big courage just like this man, you know? Just like this uh, David. And he can declare that God is Jehovah Sabaoth. He is the God, the Lord of hosts. And we know the story that he won against this giant Goliath. What are the giants that we have in our life? What are the giants that we are facing in life? Many times we are facing a lot of giants in our life. But the Lord, remember, that it should give us um, a confidence to fight whatever giant that we are facing because we know that the Lord is the Jehovah Sabaoth. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of heaven's army. He will fight for you. He will, he will fight against you, against the enemy. Sabi dito sa Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, No weapon forms against you shall prosper. Any weapon, there is no weapon against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So it is the Lord himself who is talking over here that if he said that there is no weapon forms against you because he is the one who is promising over here. It is me who is talking over here that if, if I say that there is no weapon that forms against you will prosper, it is what it is because the, the, the word of the Lord is like it's true. Whatever he promises, he will do whatever he promises. Parang, if there is no weapon formed against you, if you will put your name over there, you, there is no weapon formed against Sarah shall prosper. There is no weapon forms against Edry 
shall prosper. Right? Put, 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 try to put your name over there. That there is no weapon that could form against you. I know. And this promise is not just for Isaiah. It's not just for David. But it's also a promise that the Lord could give to us. That whenever we are facing giants in our life. And when we measure giant, don't measure the giant on yourself. But measure the giant with the bigness of the Lord. Because God is bigger than any giant. But sometimes we measure the giant over ourselves. Because if we use ourselves as the measurement, what will happen? We will see that we are small. So let God fight the battle. Let give it, give it, give the battle to the Lord. Ibigay natin yung battle natin sa the Lord because He is our Jehovah Sabaoth. So that was the second story that, that, that speaks about Jehovah Sabaoth. Alam niyo kasi, in life, Alam niyo may yung, yung tug of war? There's a tug of war, right? Yung, yung, yung tug of war, habang hinihila mo, the enemy is trying to pull over. But if you want the enemies to, to lose, just let go of, your, of the rope. Dahil kusang mabubuwal na yung kalaban mo. If you will just give it to the Lord, if you will just let God move it, your enemy will just fall just like that. Don't fight the battle yourself, but give the battle to the Lord. So, that's the second story. And the last story, we're in the God of Angels armies. It was mentioned in the Bible, is in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, we're in, there was this prophet, no? Yung prophet na to, he sees um, whatever the king of Aram is planning. This king of Aram is trying to destroy the king of Israel. But the Lord have given this prophet a vision to be able to see whatever the king of Aram, the Arameans, are planning. So, whenever this king of Aram is planning to destroy Israel, this prophet would go to the prophet, to the king of Israel. I'm telling you, king, that this king of Aram, they are planning something against you. So, nadi-destroy yung, 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 yung plan ng king of Aram. So, every time that they plan, nadi-discarrel, it is because this prophet would tell the king of Israel whatever their plan is. So, they are one step ahead. And because of that, the king of Aram was so suspicious that there is someone who is spying them. Merong nag spy sa atin. But one of the servants told the king of Aram, no king, there was, there's no spy. What it is, there is a prophet in Israel who could see everything that you are doing, even the innermost chamber of your room. That he could hear whatever you are saying. Sabi niya ganun. So because of that, the king of Aram would want to kill this prophet. And this prophet's name is Elisha. And this is what happened. So what, 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 what happened was this king of Aram, he sent his entire army. Si sinend yung entire army niya for, uh, to uh, to surround the place where Elisha is. It says here. So nandoon na lahat ng, ng army ready to attack the the prophet of the Lord. When Gehesai, Gehesai is the servant of the uh, of this of this prophet. When Gehesai, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, got up and went up early the next morning, an army with the horses and chariot has surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? And the servant asked. So, the army of this Aram who is so upset, who is so mad with this prophet, Elisha, 
He sent his entire army and the entire army surrounded the city, the place where this prophet lives. And when Gehazi woke up that morning, he saw the entire chariots, entire armies, horses surrounding them, wanting to kill them. But he does not see what the prophet is seeing. The prophet is seeing something else. The vision of the prop of, of this of this servant of the of the prophet is limited. He's not seeing the, the spiritual things. He does not is not seeing Jehovah Sabaoth. He's not seeing the God of Angels army, the, the chariots of fire that are right there. His physical eyes must be working, but his spiritual eyes are not working. Kumbaga, he needs the spiritual vision to see the out of ordinary thing, the not, not, not natural thing, the out of ordinary thing. See, kasi ang nakikita niya, he just see the danger, but he's not seeing the deliverance of the Lord. There are times in our life we're like that. We are seeing the danger, we are seeing the problem, but we are not seeing the deliverance of the Lord. And then, ano sabi ni Elisha? Ano sabi ni Elisha to this servant, don't be afraid. The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Those who are with us are more than are those that are with them, wherein, in fact, it's just the two of them. Why? Because the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth, is with them. The Lord of angels' army, the God of angels' army, the Jehovah Sabaoth, is with the prophet of the Lord, with, uh, with, with prophet Elisha. No? The God, if, you, if God is with you, yes. We are the majority. Kasi, why? Sabi dito, oh, 1 John 4.4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So, what did Elisha do? Para makita. So, so this Gahisai, his servant, will be able to see what he is seeing. Because Elisha, Elisha is seeing something wherein the servant is not seeing so what he did, Elisha, Elisha prayed. Sabi niya, open his eyes, Lord. Ano? Imagine that. Imagine that. When the prophet of the Lord prayed to the Lord, Lord, open his eyes. And then his eyes were open and he was able to see, see the unseen thing. He's able to see the things that is out of the ordinary. He is uh, seeing something beyond your bare eyes could see. He is something seeing a great bass, a, f a, a hills full of horses and chariots. He is uh, seeing something that is incredible, seeing something that is so marvelous beyond imagination. Wonderful. If the Lord opens your spiritual eyes, you will see something that is marvelous in life wherein other peoples are not seeing. If the Lord opens your spiritual eyes, you will see something great, something spiritual. Sometimes we feel like we are outnumbered, just like what, what they're feeling. Huh? They're feeling outnumbered. But if God is with you, you are always the majority. Because God is the Lord of angels' army. Diba? Praise God. And then it says here, Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Alam nyo, I was watching the last, last time, no? CJ and I were watching this uh, um, animal uh, channel. Oh, we just watch a little bit of it. Uh, meron palang fish 
There, there is this kind of fish. It's called anableps, a four-eyed fish. Four-eyed fish. Yung four eye, pero dalawa lang yung mata niya. Dalawa yung mata niya. Pero ang tawag sa kanya, four-eyed fish. Let me read you the article. Ano? The four-eyed fish is probably, sabi niya dito, let's see, is probably one of the most unusual large size live bearer fish with a strange looking eye. Despite how their name is four-eyed, they really have only two eyes. And no, they don't wear glasses either. They got their name because of their eyes have two pupils and they have the ability to see above and below the water surface. Their unique eyes gives them the ability to watch out for predators from above and to search for food like mosquitoes as well as search for food in the water. So, they can see, dahil dalawa yung pupil nila, the other pupil is able to see over the water and the other pupil are able to see under the water. So, they have eyes, they have this vision that other fishes cannot see and do not see. Same true with us in our spiritual life, no? There are things, if the Lord opens our spiritual eyes, there are things that we could see that the other people are not seeing. Just like these four-eyed fish, you know, that they could see above the water and they could see below the water. You know? And uh, if, if God opens our eyes, we can see the spiritual realms as well as the, the physical realms. And we will see that the Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of angels army, is right there. Something that is spiritual. Just like when prophet Elisha prayed to God that his servant, would, his eyes would be open and his eyes were open. And he was able to see ano, the, 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 the chariots of fire. Verse 19, it says here, As the enemy come down towards him, Elisha prays to the Lord, struck, Strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. So what happened with that one? They did not even lift a finger to fight against these chariots of uh, this, this, this army of the Arams, the Aram, Aramean army. They didn't even do he just prayed to God, Lord, bulagin mo sila. They were all blinded. They were struck with blindness. And then you know what happened? Elisha said, Oh, I want to let you know. You are in the wrong place. This is not the right place. Come, follow me, and I'll lead you to the right place. So this army, they follow him. You know where did he brought them? To the king of Israel. O king, ikaw na bahala dito. I'm surrendering to you these armies. The whole hill, and dami nito. They were blinded and, 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 and from there. But you know, what did they do? They did not kill these armies. They were just sent back to their place. O, umuwi na kayo. That's, that's, uh, and that's what happened. That's what happened. The Lord will fight for us. The Lord will be, uh, there is no weapon that forms against us will prosper. If the Lord is with us, we are the majority. And lastly, this will be my last slide. Take delight in the Lord and he will give your heart's desire. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he what? And he will help you. He will help you. All we have to do is delight ourselves into the Lord. We want to make sure that we are always on the side of Jehovah Sabaoth. And if we are on the side of Jehovah Sabaoth, I want to let you know that we are on the victory side. We are on the winning side. But whenever you are in the other side, on the opposition side, that's where the defeat is. 
So you always choose to be on the side of Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of angels, armies, the God, the Lord of hosts. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. We thank you, O God, once again for revealing us uh, your great and wonderful name, O Lord, that you are the Jehovah Sabaoth, that you are the Lord of hosts. You are the Lord of heaven's armies. You are the Lord of angels' armies, O God, who are ready to fight for us, O Lord that we are in an always constant battle, a spiritual battle for we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities and the rulers and the darkness of this world, O Lord. We pray that you continue to empower us, O God, and open our eyes so we can see your marvelous work, O God. We can see, O God, your greatness, O God. We will see that you are the God who will fight for us. We thank you, O God, for tonight. We thank you, O God, for our worship. We thank you, O God, for your word. And we pray, O God, that you are glorified in our worship tonight. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everyone. Yes, give a clap offering to God. Have a blessed week, everyone. God bless.